Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Podcast. I'm your host, Holly, and I would. I have a wonderful guest here with me today, Mr. West Taylor, who I just met a week ago, but I, I'm i just loving what you're putting out in the world. I love horses. I love what you're up to. I love how I met you and the beautiful time that we had together. And I want to share you with everybody that's listening. Wes Taylor is a public figure, a husband, a father, a grandpa, and a horse guy. So if you want to reintroduce yourself in like a more, yeah, like your way, please do so. But I'm so excited to bring you to all my listeners. Hey, that sounded awesome to me. I'll, I'll take all of that. That sounded perfect. I've been, I've been a lot of things in life and you know, there's a lot of labels, but I loved all of those. So thanks for having me. I'm super oh, yeah. looking forward to just having some cool, fun conversations. Yes. So I was fortunate enough to meet Wes about a week ago, and we got to go over to his home and watch him work with horses. It was amazing and insightful and a bit of a slap in the face, but in a good way, had a nice sting to it. <laughs> but we're watching Wes do uh, work with the horses. And and I, I don't think this is the right word. You're not breaking horses. What, what is it? Right. How would you describe what it is you do with horses? Well, a good term for it that, that I'm comfortable with, and I, I think that resonates with the type of work that I do, but it'd be called gentling, gentling is a good horses. word. So gentling horses, that's like that, that word works good. Um, and, and we're talking about wild horses. So these are like yeah. wild horses that are running free out in the wild in, in America right now. So it's, that's and amazing. those horses are a, a much kind of higher level of uh, their self-preservation, their fight flight, their natural instincts are at a, you know, they're at a much higher level than say, you know, a domestic horse that has kind of had all of kind that of been, behavior, bred. been bred out of them. Yeah. Okay. Cause it was, it's, it's hard to deal with. You've got to really know what the hell you're doing to, to work with that dynamic of energy. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's what you were watching. So that horse that we had in there was really quite still wild. You know, he was still um, kind of going through and I call it going through their transformation. I, I really love the journey of taking these wild horses. They're so full of, fight flight and and you know every answer is just no and run you know that 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 solves everything you just you just run you know flee everything sounds like me sometimes I know, right? <laughs> right? we all do we have our flea instincts inside of us as well but taking this horse and to me it's such an honor and it's just an enjoyable experience to walk it through its life transformation yeah. to where that horse can then be calm and quiet in the chaos of our human world and now this this prey animal can now partner with the predator. So right, we're we're making this the ultimate transformation. Wow. I love yeah. that. Yeah. For those two to come together and be able to create a relationship and a partnership based on safety and then mm. go forward. Ooh. That's You're what just... I do. Speaking to my heart there, I'm like, oh, that's what I need to create in all my relationships. Absolutely. I, I love how you take what you do and apply it to yourself. And it's it's like a a beautiful, I don't know, movie painting, what, however you want to say, it, but it's artwork, what you do with these horses. And then to have that reflect back to you, like, oh, this is me. This is how I do things. And we got to, we got to be with you. I don't know if it was two hours or if it was 30 minutes, it, it was a, whatever time it was, it was amazing, but we just got to watch you get this horse to be comfortable with the uncomfortable and overcome some fears and um, not in a way that you just push through it with, without, I don't know, I guess, spiritual bypassing. I don't know if you've heard that term, but not like I running have. through it, but to explore and be curious. It, it, it was brilliant. Yeah. Well, it, I, I kind of had to do this work back on myself. Cause I was, I've been 15 years figuring this out, you know, so it's been, okay. a, it's been a journey, you know, I've been on a, I've been, I've been on my trip for sure, you know, down the rabbit hole with a horse. But as I kept figuring out how they operated, and then that was reflecting back to me, I was like, well, if they have these fight flight instincts and these reactions, I, I do too. So how can I, I want to see them in the horse, but can I see them in myself? And so yeah. we, we kind of, you know, for, for 10 years there, I thought I was training horses, but what the reality was is they were like, dude, it took us 10 years to train this freaking human, you know, to get this guy to see him. <laughs> and how many horses? <laughs> yeah, it took a whole bunch of horses in 10 years for this human to kind of have this awakening and have this aha. So, but it's, it has been so fun to overlay the two. Everything yeah. matches. That's the beauty of it to me. 
and for me and that's what you got to see as we were working that's kind of it working was with the horse brilliant yeah you, you could see the overlay between what was going on with the horse and its autonomic system its beliefs its experience and then you could overlay that with yourself of oh wow i i have stressful tense experiences as well i mm -hmm. yes my heart rate gets up and yes my breathing gets short and shallow yes my muscles get tight yes i'm looking for the exit yes i want to leave <laughs> you know all that's just behavior that's just how our bodies talk to us and so learning to read that in the horse and then overlay it to myself has been an incredible learning experiential journey very so rewarding said 15 years total you've been working with horses oh my mm -hmm. goodness and how did you, I know I know a little bit about this but how did you make that jump over to horses because this is not where you started no this was not my life path gosh I've been I mean, I've been in the construction industry. I One of my goofiest jobs I like to tell people is I was a donut maker at one time. Yes. Right? A baker guy that. in there making donuts <laughs> at you know, two o'clock in the morning to have them ready for the guy. Oh my gosh, I I've love been, it. I've been a landscape. I've done a lot of things. I've really yeah. done a lot of things. I'd love to tell you, Holly, that I just, I had this awareness in myself that I wanted to just level up and I wanted to just be the new version of me. But that, wouldn't it's be not true. true. <laughs> That's <laughs> that not what it was. True. You got your ass kicked and then you decided there to you do go. this. <laughs> there you go. Some people call it a, a spiritual awakening. I called it mm. a midlife crisis, a yeah. freaking catastrophe. You mm. know, the, the, the mess of my life just imploded. Yeah. That's how I made the transition. Um, yeah, at the time, super painful, very, to me, embarrassing, very, uh, very much a, a a failure is kind of you know kind of viewed it as a failure in a sense and 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 to me just always being a just a, a I just always wanted to be a grown-up when I was a kid so I just always wanted to be a grown-up so I don't really have much memories of being a kid because I didn't want to be a kid I don't know why I just wanted to be an adult well then I got to be an adult and I kind of trashed that for you know a number of years of trying to figure out how to be this adult but I thought yeah. I was doing it right you know I thought I was doing you the checking the boxes and stuff yeah yeah and that all just led to this this complete breakdown a complete loss of identity I lost mm. you know I, I was connected I was identifying with all of my stuff and my my job yeah. titles and my neighborhood and you know all of those things yeah, that, that that's how I defined myself was, well, what do I look like on the outside? That's all that's important. What yeah, do I look like on the outside doesn't matter what's how going do on. People on the relate inside. to me. Yeah. yeah what do I they just, see when they look at me? I just yeah. Not, well, not even what do they see? But this is what I want them to see. Uh, OK, that makes you know yeah. what I mean? Here's like, the facade. This here, is who I am. Yeah. Here's my shiny cover. You know, and I had a cool shiny cover, too. Man. Yeah. I was, I was I had some stuff. You're doing on. the things. You yeah. had the stuff, the status. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. And anyway, I, I was so identified with that. So losing that identity was another major life crisis for me. Was, yeah. All of that went away in about a 30 day period. It just got Ooh. vaporized really fast. Yeah, that's a slap yeah. in the face. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, it was, it was fast. It was critical. It, I mean, it, it just happened. And uh, so the, the, that, that kind of pushed me out of my community of where I was living and the, the, you know, I lost my business Wow. Re repo guy come and took all the stuff that could get repoed you know we sold other things we give other stuff away we had to get out of our house but you know the business was wow. gone we we sold the trucks and the tools you know we just my my life total shift my life become a, a listing of classified ads man it was just wow poof just it's got to go it's got to go wow and, and that was tough that's like a, a Phoenix story. I hope, I hope you like birth from the ashes though. Cause like, yeah. that's rough. That's like stripping you down to your essence, right? Like there's yeah. no external facade left, nothing else outside of you to tell you who you are. Like it's up to you Super to make vulnerable. or break. Yeah. Super vulnerable moment. And then for me to think that everybody could see inside of me and see what was really going on, scared the hell out of me. Right. Yeah. When you think people, when I think people see like in, and I'm just like, oh, don't look in there. Like it scares me. Yeah. So to to be kind of stripped down naked, essentially like, oh, that's yeah. rough. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what kind of started this, this was this really hard thing, right? This really hard life event was, 
was the beginning of this of my massive life transformation, you know, to, to where I'm, I am now, 15 years later, completely different guy, entirely different view of life, a, an entirely different interaction with unbelievability about myself and money and my relationships. You know, it's a, I scrapped everything when that wow. happened. I, I tossed it all. I was like, I, I've been living this way full throttle for 25 years. My wife and I had been married 25 years at that time. And I was like, I've been full throttle, totally buying into this, bullshit like i was in yeah Hell, I, like this I is a meaning <laughs> I, yeah. I was the poster guy for it you you're know? like come on in this is this yeah. is how you should live i was i was it and so boom anyway massive change and uh so would you say like that you're you're that wasn't true you or that was just uh, like a facade you had or would you say that was the phase that i went through and that was absolutely me and now i'm still me and i'm more authentic like what would how I would you wear that it. I love that question. And here's, here's the answer that I tell myself about that. Cause I had to ask myself that same question. Yeah. A Who lot. am I really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, so here's, here's my, my phrase for that. Sometimes we don't know who we are until we experience who we are not. Mm. That's good. I like that. Cause that's so true. And if we, for me, like I kind of used to, and maybe I still do, but look to outside authorities to tell me who to be, how to be, when to be, what to be, and that kind of a thing. So those were good ways of figuring out who I'm not, Yeah. but I still, I had to take that authority back and say, oh, okay, thank you for helping me figure out who I'm not. And a little bit of who I am, I'm going to have to yeah, choose yeah. a different direction and see yeah. who I really I, am. So you went I horses. Think, <laughs> I, I did. I went horses and I, I, and I feel like that's this is just part of the natural part of being human. Like there's nothing wrong with what I experienced previous in my life or you or anybody else in their life. I don't view that there's anything wrong with what has already happened yeah, or who you have already been. That is all part of the learning that can kind of provide the, the well, like you saw when I was working with that horse, you know, a little bump of pressure, like, hey, dude, I need you to just. I need you to go to the left just a couple inches and go this way. That's what I feel those life moments are. They're just like, hey, yes, you might just take a look over your left shoulder. There, there might be something super Plants. cool over there. And so I life, that's how I view it. So I don't have any regrets about anything that I've, that I've experienced in my life. It's all, it's all been painful and it's all been so valuable. Yeah, that's a bold statement to say everything that has already happened to me has great value. And I mean, for me, it's like, it's made me who I am. Maybe yeah. sometimes I don't like seeing that. And and that's, <laughs> again, I'm thinking of Gus, the horse that we saw and his avoidance of this new thing. And for me, it was a lot of avoidance of, I don't want to look at my past experiences and, and admit that those happened. So this was like, yeah. it really, I really felt it when we were there. It was really helpful to say like, what am I avoiding and, um, what tactics am I using to get away and yeah. how is life pushing me to see these things anyway, for my own good. And then, you know, the, the biggest thing, like what, that avoidance you talked about, like, how is it that I avoid? And then the, what the horses have taught me. And I love bringing the science into this with the horses. You get a neurochemical reward for avoiding, you know, you get a dopamine bump for not doing the, whatever. The, the yeah. hard thing or by avoiding See, you're safe yeah and so you know your your internal system will say let's keep you safe let's stay in mm -hmm. the comfort zone and then so you do you make that decision you stay in the comfort zone you get another little neurochemical reward for staying in the comfort zone and then that just tightens up your comfort zone just a teeny bit more each time you know and then before long we're so we're so wired of staying in our comfort zone that anything that even rattles that we're like oh my world's coming to an end you know there's there's no threshold it's all just straight very, back to the comfort zone. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you're there. So we shouldn't just be left to our own devices. We should be bumping into life and to people. Is that kind of the message that's, to take from that? That's what I'm getting. <laughs> Get that's, uncomfortable. Yeah, yep, that's what I'm getting. Well, here's, and, and, and all I can do is refer this back to horses, Holly. So yes, we can hear that a lot. That's what I love. I love horses. We can hear a lot because here's what I know when I'm talking about horses, I know that I can, I can be very comfortable in that space and speaking my truth in that space. And so that way so I can helpful. feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah I can please feel it. do. It's an amazing illustration. That. Does that make sense? I can feel yeah. safe talking about that. Cause I know that I've been in there. Um, 
I forgot what I was going to say about the horses. <laughs> Comfort zones, horses, um, amazing, brilliant animals. Oh, I love Gus. Hashtag I love Gus. I don't know. Yes. He was amazing illustrator of who I've been, who I still sometimes am and my potential. He's he. So the horse that you were working with while I was there was Gus and he's, he looked brilliant and amazing to me. I don't know a lot about horses, so I can't say maybe he wasn't brilliant, and amazing, but I feel like if you're working with him, he probably has great potential. Yeah. You'd probably don't pick out, I don't know, horses that aren't going to go anywhere. Um, but to see myself and him and to relate to a horse in in a way more than just an animal or just some kind of thing I can observe, but to yeah. kind of meet him a little bit on a soul level. Like I wasn't working with him one-on-one. -on -one. I was watching you work with him with like a crowd of people, but I could still relate to him. And so my kind of want to ask you like, how often do you really just like look into the eyes of a horse and you meet their soul? Is that a thing? Like, oh, how do yeah. you meet a oh, horse yeah. where they're at? Oh yeah. That's, it sounds beautiful. that's been some of the the my most enlightening moments with these horses has been when i've been able to really connect at a very deep soul spiritual level instead of a animal level it's like I'm telling way, you what to do yeah like you way, follow me yeah it's way deeper way deeper than that and i've had some i've had many impactful moments where that horse is just spoke directly to me during the training has just laid out some stuff for me and, just, and it's been in just these teeny little it's just these teeny little nuances that that I just like I'm finally you know like quieting myself enough and I'm attentive enough and I'm relaxed enough that I could see it I don't doubt that it's always been there I just wasn't ever able to connect or to see it and so in these moments here and there when I, I really view the horses are teaching me when those little moments come through, it is just sometimes I sometimes I laugh and smile and I'm like, oh my hell, that did not just happen. <laughs> did you just you know? say that to me? Yeah. <laughs> well, so, are you what? <laughs> and I just said, so I don't like have a communication like verbal chat back and forth with them in that sense. It's very much just an energetic kind mm -hmm. of feeling back and forth. But there's mm -hmm. definitely little little blips, little messages that come through that just rock me back on my heels. And I'm like, oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for showing me that. I had no idea. So that, magic. That, is, that is healthy for the soul. I love that. I, uh, that just, that's the value of all these different creatures on the planet. So I'm like, oh, I'm a proponent for all the different encounters that we have. I don't know, plants and rocks and, and horses and yeah. all the other animals. Like we get to meet, I feel like we get to meet God when we're, because when you're meeting soul to soul level, like there's, I don't know, some kind of universal God particle there or something. Maybe I'm something. taking something profound and making it too significant here, but that's a, that's a really cool experience. And, and yeah. so you share that with other people. I mean, I, I got to experience it that way, but you also have a ranch. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So that, that, that the ranch property, this was, <laughs> I love that it's come so full, so full circle now, because this is where I, this is kind of where I went to after my, my, my midlife crisis breakdown moment. Like I retreated back to safety, like you know, Just where, hunker down. where am I going to go to? I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm lost. I'm confused. And I don't have any identity of uh, work. You know, so I went back to family ranch property and my grandfather recently passed away a few months prior. And so the, the property was just vacant at that moment. And kind of the family's like, what are we, what are we going to do with this property? And I had always gone and lived with my grandfather as a young kid and worked on the ranch with Fun. him. So this house and this property I have been living at since I can ever remember. That's so this has always, it's always been in my mind, my safe place. Like grandpa's mm -hmm. house was all through my life. You know, when, when life was getting bad or whatever would happen, man, if I could just take a trip to grandpa's for a night or two would, would kind of help fix me up. And so yeah, that was my safe space. So anyway, I reached out to the family and we went back. They said, I, you know, I'd go to the ranch and, I just needed somewhere to regroup and to try to figure out what I wanted to, what do I do? Yeah. I, you know, I didn't want to go back to trying to just go earn money or just, you know, back into business. The game. I, already 25 years of that. And I was like, mm, that didn't work. 
the answer isn't I'm there not, for you. I'm yeah. not going to invest any more time and effort into that. That was that was a com- I told myself a complete lie about that. So I was like, I'm not doing that. That's big to see that because that's that's oh. hard to admit, right? Just like oh. I devoted this much time, energy, space, yeah. uh, to this, and it like no corn, like there's no fruits here anymore. Like I got to move on. Not by what I had um, labeled or identified. You know, I did learn a lot about that whole experience, oh, okay. but yeah. not until after. You know, not until well after, because I was <laughs> yeah. when I was in it, I was looking for the wrong reward. You know, I I was looking okay. for my definition of success and, and love, peace, and joy in my life. And in, 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 I had it, the terms incorrectly defined. I wasn't looking for it in the right places. So I couldn't find it no matter how hard I tried and no matter how hard I worked or no matter how much money I made. Yeah. It just isn't, it's kind of never enough if you're looking for like the wrong answers. Yeah. So how would you help point that out to somebody who's like in that, like what small sayings could, would you share to say, here's kind of how I stepped out of that, just seeing material goods or whatever it was as a reward and finding out my true, who I am, what I want to be. And this this comes back to horses again. So I love it. Yes, We've got a a good quote that we made in working with these wild horses. And then we'll, um, is that slow down faster to get done sooner. Slow down so faster. Kind of let that bounce around the school for a minute. I know. I'm like, slow, slow down, down faster, faster to, get to get done sooner. So okay. whatever it is that I feel like, you know, that I'm trying to do, if I will slow down and engage with doing it, like really experience it, really be calm with it, really be with it, I'll accomplish that thing sooner. I mean, the mm. horses have taught me. It's like you watch with. Oh, and his his name is Cuz the horse. Cuz. Is Cuz. Oh my gosh, I'm saying Gus this whole time. Sorry, right. Cuz. That's all right. I got it. <laughs> so remember watching Cuz when I was kind of asking him to go to this <clears throat> scary thing. Did you notice how slow we went? Mm-hmm. It, it took several go arounds. And it was one step at a time, and then relax. And you know, was wanting Cuz to really be in the experience for his neurochemical system to start to releasing the fear and anxiety and to start building the safety that takes you got to go we got to go slow we got to experience that we got to be in it and feel it not yeah. run through it and just ignore it or or break through it or push through it well, there's no learning there because we, we we bypass the Forcing. experience yeah yeah, yeah. and, and so, i'm Someone who will do that, just force oh, my do. way through. See, I we did do. it. <laughs> sure. we, we do in all areas. And the good news of all this is, is we, we've got to have balance. So yeah, we're going to yeah. force through in some things and then we'll go slow here, but finding the balance to where we're working to be the most balanced that we can do. And so for me, I didn't know how high strung I was when I was high strung. I just thought mm. that was normal. So yeah. for me or what I would offer or try to say to somebody is, if you're not sleeping at night and you lay down and close your eyes and your eyeballs are bouncing around in your skull and your mind's going a million miles an hour about what you, what this or that or the other, there's your sign. This, this was for me that I missed. I missed <laughs> this sign is what I'm saying. So I, I think a lot of us it. do. <laughs> like, well, I'm getting the reward, the external reward of like friends and family or, or I feel status like, oh good, yeah. you did all the things, you checked these boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at night I can't sleep a wink because I'm so worried about continuing to check those boxes. Yeah, it's never enough. Your body will give you warning signals. Your body will tell you uh, uh, how things are going. That's what I've learned is that I've, That's well said I, too. I thought my body was just, I don't Tired know. Tired or something. Part of, it was just part of, part of life. I don't know. I didn't even, I don't even know what I thought years ago, but now I know that my body is an absolute message center. Like it is constantly giving me real time biofeedback about my environment, about my beliefs, about what's going on in my life. Like if I can find and quiet myself enough to allow my message system to talk to me, then I, that can give me insight and calmness and direction. But you know, if you're, if things are just running, that monkey mind's going a hundred miles an hour and you're not tuning into your body to see what's going on. That's, that's a, a That'll lead you to some to a breakdown. It'll, it'll, yeah. it'll lead to a something's breakdown. going down. Something's gonna break. Something's gonna go sideways. Yep. Time to calm yep. down. So how do you maybe this is an answer with the horses again, but like how do you help horses? How do you how do we help ourselves calm down 
before things get really uncomfortable. What do you see in horses that they self-soothe maybe, or with humans maybe meditating? What, what answers yeah. do you have for us? Here's, here's what I see that happens is if, if this isn't allowed to happen with the horses, this slowing down and this relaxing. So we'll get to that. But what the horse will do is tolerate all of that pressure for mm-hmm. however long. Mm-hmm. And then what ends up happening at some point, somewhere, sometime, someday, it's that pressure, that that tolerance is not going to be able to tolerate anymore. And that horse is going to have a blow up. You know, it's going to it's health gonna, issue it's or gonna, it, it, it'll either be a health issue. Most likely in the horses, though, it's, it's a, a physical like they just break down. Out. You know, they, they buck, they kick, they, they bolt and run off. And, you know, when you've got a human on there and that can be extremely dangerous and people, get, yeah. you know, people actually get killed from this type of behavior of these type of breakdowns. And then the same type of thing happens with with us and our bodies is, you know, we're going to have some type of a breakdown with us humans. It's a lot more. I feel it's a lot more kind of sickness and illness and disease because of our our food supply. The horses eat a pretty clean diet. You know, it's it's, it's all green. right? It's just grass. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't have a lot of the the, the chemicals that we're eating and putting into our bodies with the food. And so they don't quite get the sicknesses that we do. But that's what I think the breakdown. and, And I've learned to listen to my body that, you know, I got this this thing in my neck a little kink in my neck from when i was a kid a little injury that i had happen and when i get stressed and anxious that thing will talk to me and it'll tell me really early if mm-hmm. i am listening yeah and if, and if i'm not listening then you you see me walking around with a stiff neck like oh i gotta turn my whole <laughs> hey body <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not stressed it's fine it's yeah, cool <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine I'm <laughs> it's fine. cool my neck just oh, it's gosh. just kidding. that's that's oh, kind of what oh. we're sh- trying to do right is in, well, maybe out in social uh, situations, or like when we look outside of ourselves, that's kind of the training is, yeah, go ahead, keep going, keep doing, produce, produce, produce. Otherwise you're not of value. And yeah. Yeah. and that's that's what I told myself. Like that's how yeah. I create my value. And so I was doing more produce. and more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Not- so what lesson have the horses taught you? It's just like, you don't have to like be producing all the time. You could just be. Do they For teach me, you that? Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Once I understood, and I kind of had some help from a mentor, um, Dr. Steve Peters, a neuroscientist, he was kind of coaching me and talking to me about these neurochemicals and, and how they work with the horses. And he was telling me that in between, you know, if there's a stressor to the horse and they upregulate a little bit or a lot, whatever that amount is, mm-hmm. if you'll pause the pressure, if you'll, you'll back off before they leave, you know, if you back off and just lower that pressure a little bit before flight is actually connected to the motor system and it leaves, yeah, back off and just wait, just observe, just watch. And what's going to happen? The horse is going to take a big breath. It'll start to blink its eyes a little bit more. Its ears mm-hmm. will start to relax. It'll lower its head and then it'll lick and chew, which is a marker for this dopamine release that happens. He says, but that takes time. You have to, you have to be patient and wait right there for this to happen. And when that happens, we're, we're releasing the cortisol and adrenaline from the horse, right? The, the anxiety and, yeah. and the fuel to power. chemicals. We're going to lower those down, release them. And then when we get to that quiet space, we get that dopamine hit, that neurochemical reward for behavior. Well done. And yes. Now the horse is like, oh, I feel, I'm feeling better more dopamine in our system, more learning that's available to us. Oh, that so, is well illustrated. <laughs> yeah. And so as he was telling me this, he's like, well, if you want your horses to learn fast, go slow. That is, I know. I was like, how do we bring that quote back? Okay. There you Say go. it again. To, to slow down order, faster. Slow to down get faster. Done sooner. To get done sooner. So I if I'm wanting to that. train this horse and the end result of me getting done is let's say I'm going to ride this wild horse. That's the getting done. Okay. Well, if I want to ride this horse or if I want to get done, then I need to slow down faster, meaning slow down as soon as I engage with that horse. Don't wait 30 minutes to slow down. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as I engage, so slow down faster. Right when I say hi, slow down. That's so great. And then if I slow down faster, I'll release more stress and worry out of the horse. I'll increase dopamine and serotonin. So dopamine is required for learning. Serotonin will balance the emotions in the horse between fear and safety. And if that horse is balanced between fear and safety and has learned and had some good experiences with me, I'll be able to get done sooner and ride that horse. Mm. 
I love that. I love that. And it makes me think of how I am in relationships. So if I come to someone, yeah. Hey, how are you? What's going on? What are you up to? Tell me all the things that you're do, 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 doing. It's like, Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's fine. Well, what's going on with you? You know, kind of like slowing that Slow initial down. meet with people down and, and with your family and with, and with yourself sometimes, like I go to meet myself, like in journaling or sometimes meditation and, or we're like on a, my desert walks around here, but yeah. like, What's the way that you go to meet yourself in this kind of slow down to get done faster mm. way? Well, the horse has taught me how to do, how to do it because mm -hmm. so I was in my mind, I was training the horses, right? So I'm going oh, to I love this. slow down, <laughs> I'm going to train this horse to slow down. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. cause I'm, I've got this new science information from my, my neuroscience friend. And so I've gotten engaged with the horse and do this. And then I, I start to find that balance of just enough pressure that they're alert. And, and then I back off and wait long enough. And I started getting really good at setting up that, that dynamic. I've seen it. I've seen you do it. It's yeah, good. It's, it and is. it's like, again, so well illustrated. Everyone needs to come see you do that. <laughs> it is a fun, it's, it is so worth seeing. It, it's just, it's life like it's on display in front of right there in front of us. And so the horse, you know, so the longer I was so curious about this behavior. So I had a lot of want to, you know, I had a lot of curiosity about what is going on with this Let, waiting and slowing down. Cause I've never felt that in horsemanship and anything I'd done and, and over my life. Yeah. Slow yeah. Down. I was like, that's not in my life. It's slow like, down. get it done faster, faster. That's for those hippie woo woo people. I ain't got time to <laughs> slow down, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So those I, was weirdos. Getting, I was getting things I'm total weirdo. <laughs> I was getting <laughs> things done. I'm the president of the weirdo club in my I know. area. Just so you know. I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know. We're, like, I, we're laughing at ourselves here. <laughs> yeah. So finding that value in it with the horse, I I was like, oh wow, this is really working phenomenal. Like I could get these horses doing so much better so much sooner by going so much slower. I was like, wow. Well, then I had to take a look at myself. I was like, well, how does this apply to you then? Right. So then I had to start looking at that in me of like, well, it's so valuable in the horses. What am I going to be telling kind of universal flow energy or intuition if I'm like, yeah, that's good for the horse, but not for me. Yeah. I'm like, what message am I sending? What, what am I saying? What am I saying to all of my myself that that can't work for me or I don't, I'm not willing to put the work in to go figure that out. That's a good question. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta know. Yeah. How do I do this for me? And so I, I started to find the ways for me to slow down in life and, and what works for me. And, and I've got several modalities that I, that I use and like now. And, and one of them is I, I love a hot sauna. Like mm. that is my space to go and just, just, be Let it out. Be, be uncomfortable, right? It's hot. Okay. 100, it's bright. 195 degrees in there. It's hot. It's yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah. And so to sit there and to slow down and find comfort in that pressure, that heat environment, I've learned to love. I crave it. It's my space. I love it. Wow. I have a sauna in my house. This is like my thing. Like, you know, people make a yoga room or a meditation mm -hmm. room or whatever. Like, sauna room. I made a sauna room. And, <laughs> I love it. And it is, it is my, it's, so that works really well for me to just have that really um, quiet space. But then I'm also a very um active like I've, I've added fitness into my life in the last number of years and that's that's been a, Ooh, new, that thing sounds good. Yeah. a new thing to do that okay so you haven't uh, always been fit people can no. add this later in life you don't have to be doing it the yeah. whole time you can start anew uh, anytime 49 i was hey, 49 that's awesome 49 years old and i was like you know i feel like i'm halfway through this life and uh, my body feels like it's way it's in the 80s no <laughs> yeah yeah so i was like I'm not liking what I feel like at 49. Like, I don't like, I don't like feeling tired. I don't feel like, cause I was, I was wanting to do things, but I just didn't. Anyway, I, at 49, I told myself on my 49th birthday, I'll be fit by 50. Hey, that's like a great thing. Fit by 50, write that yep. down, everyone. Yep. <laughs> fit so by 50. What I learned about me in doing that is I love to go down rabbit holes of things that I really like or that I'm curious about or that challenge me. I hear me. that, yes. Okay, if it challenges me and I like it, oh, Even see ya. Better. I'll be yeah. back in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, once I get this figured out. <laughs> I am going down the rabbit hole. So I started this physical fitness 
and I just signed up and went to a CrossFit gym, mm. which is intense. I found <laughs> out later. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Sorry. And so I go to these <laughs> classes and my lovely CrossFit coach, 5 a.m. every morning, mm. just, you know, it's killing me. Yeah. But I'm, 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 I'm so stressed out and anxious at this time. I'm doing some new development things. Anyway, I just needed the stress relief. And so yeah. I, I was finding it in fitness. Fitness is a phenomenal stress reliever. If, oh, if yeah. you're looking for it, it's phenomenal. So for me, it was super phenomenal and very addictive to me. So I hit CrossFit five days a week for nine months. Wow. Intense and hard. <laughs> that here's, was not a slowdown. No, no, no. Here's, <laughs> here's what I, here's what I told myself. Cause I was working on some new business things since, since in, with the horses and, and I'm still working on them actually still hey. still doing the same thing it's all good but I, I I love telling myself like the stories we tell ourselves really you know creates our reality and our space so that we're in and, and how well we said. operate Does that yeah. make sense oh yeah so yeah. I was doing this this new these this new um online business things this online uh, videos and, and my taking my horse training kind of developing it into a program that other people mm. could watch my videos and then rent them or buy them. That was a yeah. big deal to me to be able to put this together in a program. And so I was in the middle of doing that and I was just stressed out. So here's what I told myself that if I wanted my, if I wanted the business side to work out, I had to work out. Okay. That's good. <laughs> so I just connected those two together. If I want my business to work out, I have to work out. I don't work out. Don't expect business to work out. Mm -hmm. Totally my choice. I'm a, you know, I've got, it's my choice to make. Yeah. That, and you kind of hooked those two. You kind of saddled yeah. them together. That's not I, I how everyone kinda, does it, but you're like, this is how it's going to work in my life. That's the story you told. Energetically connected them together. And that's the story I told. And then I told myself this story as well, because it was so painful going to the gym. I mean, when you <laughs> like five get out of bed. I don't want to be out of my bed at yeah, five. I, I don't do that anymore at 5 a.m. But um, I told myself that I I don't have to, actually do the workout every day, but I had to go down and open the gym door and walk in and tell my coach, thank you for showing up. I'm going home. Oh, hey, interesting. If I wanted to not work out that day. Yeah. I mean, this is the, this is kind of the standards the mental. Yeah. Twist that I tell myself to do things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So You're I like, this my, is where I, I have myself, integrity. Yeah. I keep my word and I, I yeah. do what I say. And if I don't want to work out today, I wanted to have a space for that to be okay. Nice. And this is how I defined it. It's four o'clock, four thirty in the morning. I don't want to work out today. Great. Get dressed, get in the car, drive downtown, go into the gym, shake your coach's hand because she showed up at 5 a.m. for you. Thank her for being her word. And then go back home and get in bed. There you go. Guess how many times I didn't go work out? I'm going to say zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. Zero times. Yeah. That's a great setup. That's a setup for success. I just, th these are the things that work for me. I don't yeah. know how well this would work for others. I know. I'm like, would it be burnout for other people or yeah, maybe it depends on everybody's got to figure it out themselves. But yep. for you, it kind of was like about integrity. It was. And, it, and just about being my, my word to myself. I didn't tell yeah. this to anybody else. This was just to me. I would be the only one that knew if I laid there in bed and didn't go down and tell my coach, thank you. Yeah. I would be the only one that knew that. And to me, that's all that mattered. That's good. That's good. I was like, I, I got to be okay with this. I got to be okay with me. Cause, and this is what I learned from the horses, you know, just being authentic, just mm -hmm. the horses are just what they are. They're not pretending. They're not faking. That's, they oh. are what they are every millisecond of their existence. And so I was like, I, how do I be that? Cause they sure look comfortable. You know, they sure look peaceful. Yeah. You know, just being can, them, they can just stand out in the pasture and stare at nothing for like five hours <laughs> know, a day. Right? You know? I'm like, what are they thinking? They like, have to be thinking that you must be pretty damn peaceful and content with yourself to just stand and stare off at nothing for hours at a time. I, yeah. Cause I like, I can't do that. That I'm would not, be rough. On I am me. not at that peace with myself that I could go sit for hours and hours and just be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm building, I'm getting there. Yeah. Oh, I can in the sauna, uh, right? Uh, yeah, in the sauna with the horses. <laughs> yep, yep. So that's that's a little kind of how I've I've neurochemically kind of worked myself as well. Is, is yeah, the is, slow down. Yeah, slow down, and 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 you know, giving myself kind of those defined 
how I'm going to do my workout and, and you know, get this, this fitness. And then, man, the dopamine reward that I would get after the class mm. driving home. Oh, and that stuff stays, stuff. it stays with you until you stress it back out. And so I would kind of stress each day and then I'd go hit the gym in the morning and just bring it all back down. So that, that balance works for me. And I still have a very high fitness drive and discipline for myself right now. I've just moved it from, uh, from CrossFit, I, I found this martial art called jujitsu, and boom, that's where it's at. I'm, your... I'm, I'm, I'm two years down that rabbit hole now. I am, awesome. I am down that rabbit hole, and I, I did the same type of disciplinary approach to it. That I, I think what it is, Holly, I can spot the learning curve coming into something. I'm like, whoa, that's uh, a big learning curve. Yeah, and I'm like, let's let's just get all of this that we can and let's get over that hump to the other side. That's Not impressive. Fast, but like experientially. Yeah. So lots of exposure to these lots things. Lots of exposure. And so that's what I did with, with jujitsu was just lots of exposure. So I, I was going to six to eight classes a week, whatever gym wow. had a class, I was signing up and going and just exposure. I wasn't yeah. to say be fast, but I was just like, I need to know this world. What is this? What is my, you know, just moving my body and, and doing that with other people. It was just phenomenal. And it, I love it, yeah. that curious mm -hmm. mind that you have, like, just it, let's hit this from so many different angles, but same topic. And, and again, like the rabbit hole of that, because yeah. to me, I think you can go down any, any rabbit hole. You can be obsessed with crystals. You can be obsessed with jujitsu. You can find God in any of those places. You know, you can find yeah. yourself in all those places. Like, whatever so if you collect stamps like so you yes. can find god in there like yes. you're gonna find it there's lessons everywhere but you you're in jujitsu i love that yeah that's that's it just it just connected with me i just followed it i i never in my life ever in my life have i said i want to roll around with guys on a mat and be all sweaty and have them try to choke the life out of me and break my arms off my body <laughs> i have never thought that would be yeah. fun or cool yeah. Who goes I mean, into I, life thinking that? Yeah. Anywhere in my past, I didn't never want to be a tough guy. I didn't ever want to really fight anybody. I like, I didn't, I never wrestled in school. Like I didn't do sports in school. Like there's none of that was in my world until I was, I don't know, until I was ready, I guess. Yeah. Or this was, That's this interesting was just pathway. the next thing that, that, that life brought to me of like, Hey, you might want to look over your left shoulder. There might be something really cool in this jujitsu thing for you. And I looked over and took the free sample and boom. I love that. That's getting out of your comfort zone and oh, exploring oh, and completely, completely out of my comfort zone. But what I've learned is I thrive on that. Mm -hmm. I, that in, that actually in, like empowers me or it, it, it gives me energy to, to get out of my comfort zone and, and to get out of my comfort zone safely. Yeah. Right? I, it doesn't necessarily feel safe. You're not body... jumping off a bridge immediately. Like right. first no. thing you're no, no, like no. kind of easy. So, you know, my body's telling me, Oh, this is going to be horrible. You, these guys are going to just beat you to pieces and you're going to be terrible at this. You know, that's, that's all the mumbo jumbo that's going on. But I also just, I knew there was something inside of me. It's like, yeah. And there's something really good here for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I just kept going with that. You know, cause part of uh, like the drive for me would be like competition. Like how many people can I beat? And like seeing yeah. like that, that's the lesson here to see what my physical body's limits can yeah. be pushed to. Yeah. And like, that's fun. There's also other stuff to learn too. And so if I'm not winning every time or like getting the quote results that I want, as far as, I don't know, matches one, I don't know how it yeah. works. I yeah. clearly don't know a lot about jujitsu, yeah. but um, you know, they, they, there's other things to learn there. Are you learning about your body? You're learning about energy. Oh. You're learning about working with, uh, I don't know, it's, I'm sure it's not sensei, but yeah, you're working absolutely. with your teacher. So yes, well, it's, dynamics. it's another way of, of finding that calmness. So with the horses in, in the environment, kind of training the horses, they're very flight oriented, right? Like mm. flee first or just flee. Just, just, that's it. Just run. That is their yeah, high. I know trigger. some people like that. <laughs> well, for, for, for me anyway, and I would maybe other people or maybe, yeah, guys, myself, maybe, yeah. you know, maybe kind of in more in particular, we might get more triggered into the fight side of it. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't ever really would have described myself as like, 
you know, I get triggered a in a fight. But as I, I look back on it very subtly, yeah, I pick fights with my wife. I pick fights with my kids, uh, you know, not at a very subconscious, quiet level. Like I didn't really recognize that I was. That's fighting. your version of fighting. Yeah. But with, with the, with jujitsu, it's, it's fighting at, you know, nine on one level and to find calmness while somebody is trying to manipulate your body into positions that it was never meant to be in mm. and to find calmness and to find safety and be like, I can be, I'm okay. Wow. I'm okay right now. I want to go and do then, jujitsu. Yeah, <laughs> You're inspiring me here. It is. It's finding this calmness. It's finding this self in the, the, it's like being in the eye of the tornado, right? It, if you're on the edge of the tornado, you're just getting, you're getting whipped, whipped around. around and beat up and there's chaos and there's debris and there's all these things happening. But when you're right in the center, it's just a peaceful, quiet space. So for but me- But some perspective it, too. You're not yeah. like in the moment of yeah. a hurricane, you're kind of, oh, here's- You can see that it's out there. So yes. when, I've got, when I've got another guy trying to just choke the life out of me, I'm kind of in that mode of like, I'm just, I got to find me some safe space and how can I just find some calmness? And then what can I do? What's my next move? What's the thing? You get, yeah. If you're just reacting like, oh no, oh no, oh no, ow, oh, oh, ow, you're done. Yeah. You're that just makes reacting. sense. Acting, you know, you're not responding to the situation. You're reacting in a very, uh, you know, you're, you're just adding to the problem in a sense because you don't know how to find a solution in the problem. So finding that solution of, Oh, he's got my collar wrapped around my neck. I've got about six seconds until I pass out. What can I do? Wow. How, how can I find the calm space? I got to get one finger in here and I can breathe for another 30 seconds. This is awesome. Wow. <laughs> Being yeah. able to do that when it's in that's the intense of the battle. It's, but that's, that's slowing down faster to get done sooner as well. Like just slow down, mm -hmm. slow down kind of be present, be with it instead of being with like the, the wild energy, the chemicals yeah. that want you to get crazy and be reactive. It's like, cause that that'll push us to a reward, right? We'll blow our stuff up. We'll, mm. we'll create chaos in our world and boom, boom, there's the mess. And it's all out on the floor and it's all out in my relationships. And then somewhere you're like, ah, oh, glad that's over. Yeah, And then we'll just start to build the same scenario again a week, a month, a year <laughs> later. Boom. Oh, oh what I got to <laughs> Yeah. That's what I, anyway, this, is, this has been my history. I, well, this makes me think of people who like break up with people frequently. I don't know, like, you know, they're in a relationship and they're like, ah, da, 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 it's, mm -mm, and they blow it up. They're done with that relationship. Or, you know, maybe people, they're having a lot of businesses or I'm trying to like yeah. think of an example of my life. I'm sure it'll come to me later. But <laughs> yeah, the things like, that we create blow ups in. Well, yeah. And I would just ask you to look, where's your, where do you get the reward? You know, where are you getting your dopamine reward? Cause that's what I've been doing with the horses is just setting up that dopamine reward to be just in front of behavior that I want. Yeah. You know, so I want them to express this behavior of curiosity, of boldness, of, of exploring. And when they engage with that behavior, they get that dopamine hit right there in front of them. You know, they've, they've sought it, they've looked for it, they've, they've, they're seeking it out. And then when they hit that, it's like, ooh, that felt good. I want to mm -hmm. do that behavior again. Well, as humans, we work the same way, but we also work the opposite way. And so do the horses, if we avoid that or we blow up, you know, we make our big mess. And as on the avoidance side, we're going to get the dopamine reward for finding yeah. our safety back over there too. Mm -hmm. Survival. So we're going to get rewarded either way. Yeah. We're conscious of we have where where's our rewards. We kind of kind of dangle the yeah. carrot out there. Yeah. Like, how and do you then, dangle the carrot in front of your it. desired behaviors? Challenging yourself like this, when you feel scared and feel uncomfortable, you're, you're probably you're, on to you're, you're lining up for it. You know, you're getting yeah. there. And so then it's how, how comfortable can you be being uncomfortable looking, That's going the towards the thing that you know, you're uncomfortable about. Like our, our human mind will can't, we got to go conquer that thing. Yeah. Well, yes, but if we can conquer it every step of the way towards it, like mm -hmm. every not step just I, once you get there, yeah, just or not run to it and beat it up and run past it and be done. You're like, I ran in, I did the hard thing, and now I'm back out. 
Well, the reward was on the back out. So you're going to run into the next hard thing and just be, you know, do the thing and get back Punch out through. again. Yeah. Well, what if instead of having one, one reward at the end, what if there was a hundred rewards at the beginning? That Much you're better. Skipping? Yeah. The pathway of gold. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's just setting up those little dopamine rewards or those little behavior rewards, those little changes in your life, just changing that story a little bit of how you're going to negotiate with yourself. And just placing, just as you engage in that behavior, you feel comfortable. You feel confident. Like, wow, I did do, I'm, I'm heading towards that hard thing. Okay, that's yeah. good. I'm Pat okay right back. here. Let me be right here for a minute. Let me feel, let me take this dopamine right here. Yeah. Do you feel like be like getting yourself to be in the present moment is kind of a dopamine hit? Mm-hmm. I'm feeling like for me, it is. Like when I'm yeah. just like, ooh, things are wild. And if I just kind of, Ooh, that's tune back in. Yeah, and then yeah. I'm like, Oh, look at these sensory things I can experience with the wind or the things that I'm seeing. And Oh, okay. My yeah. heart rate isn't going so fast. So that's a good yeah. way to get dopamine. Nature breathing. Absolutely. Yes. Beautiful places. Anything, anything that's calming you down is, is a good thing. That, that, you know, right. That's what I've noticed for me is, has helped me the most is just, that's okay. That's mm. okay. You know, a fun thing that I've, I've played around with, and, and this is something everybody can kind of do. Like, you got to go do an errand in town. You know, you're going from point A to, to, to point B, wherever it is across town. And we're always a little bit late, right, doing these errands because we got five other things that we're trying to go get done, but we're going to squeeze this errand in on the oh, way because it's always you know, squeezing whatever. them in because so you don't have to go back into town. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, with you. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> so we're going to squeeze it in. And so now we're like, ooh, we're, I'm even a little more pressed for time. So, you know, we're driving just a little faster. It's like, ooh, mm. uh, ooh. Oh, and then sure enough, ah, oh, man, another red light. Oh, dang it. Mm. Ah, I was just trying, you know, time, just, just go have some fun with yourself and time that route. Like when you leave your house, everybody's got this phenomenal stopwatch that they carry around with them called a thousand dollar iPhone or yeah. 15 or whatever. It's got a great stopwatch in it. Start that thing, measure the seconds, leave your house and rush to go get to that place across town. Like, you know, don't get a speeding ticket. Don't, don't cause anything to be any trouble but make sure you're highly anxious and you're just trying just your best to just capitalize on every second that you can like right. accelerate right to the speed limit fast you know just go a little over just you know, yep pass that car because you just you can't wait another second just try right. to do it as fast as you can and then time it and then the next day do that same thing start at your house this time just relax mm-hmm. just be calm start your timer Hmm. take even 10 seconds and just breathe before you drive out of your driveway Mm -hmm. and then all the way to that air and just you get a red light be like oh great i get to breathe quietly for a few more seconds and just Mm -hmm. enjoy the time to breathe at the red light and just there's your meditation time Yeah. yeah yeah just enjoy the flow of traffic instead of trying to set your pace and have everybody be in your way just flow you know, be a part of it traffic be a part of it and then get to your destination and then you tell me how many seconds you saved right <laughs> and how much bull crap you like built up in your body with chemically and yeah. tension in your muscles and lactic acid and whatever let's, else gets built up yeah. in there let's just say you saved a whopping two minutes and i think it'd probably be a stretch that's, to have it even yeah be, uh, it, it'll probably, probably be like less than that 15 seconds yeah. <laughs> when you i saved, race like that you saved all this time and in saving all of that time you packaged in all of this stress and anxiety mm-hmm. and worry let's say it's a 15 minute drive to do this errand so for 15 minutes you kept compressing the cortisol the stress the anxiety the worry you did that for 15 minutes and you saved yourself you know one minute of time on this planet yeah. It's going to take Is you it longer. It? It's going to take you longer than 15 minutes to get that stress out that you put in in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Everyone take that away. If you take nothing else, take that away. You don't have to stress drive. Gosh, it's been, it's been my funnest thing. I love it. I love to just get in traffic and flow with it and just mm-hmm. find that flow. And my kids, people tease me. Oh, you're driving like an old man. I'm like, I know. Hey. <laughs> But I'm yeah. not building up tons of cortisol and tension in my body. Yeah, so I'm, I'm okay be, with it. I'm going to be so chill when I get out, when I go in to do this errand. And, you know, the person's going to be so nice to me. 
and it's yeah. going to work out so great. I'm probably going to have to wait in line behind two other nice, awesome humans on this planet that I might get to say hi to because I have to wait a little longer. But I'm in the mindset that that's enjoyable and peaceful and relaxing. So it's dopamine, serotonin, dopamine, serotonin. So that you know, story my, you tell yourself is really yeah, important. My whole 15 minute drive to do that errand, I'm just dopamine and serotonin, or I save an extra minute on this planet and I can be full of cortisol and adrenaline for Ugh. that whole time. Yeah. And, and I have... gain one minute. I gain one minute of time that <laughs> I'm too stressed out to even spend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so good too. Right on the right end. This... It's like, you don't even get a reward for that. <laughs> well, there's, there's a question that I was asking myself, like, what do I do with all this time that I save? Suppose like, what am I actually time. doing with it? Like, I like where, that question. Where is it? <laughs> and how do I spend it? Yeah. I... Where are the reserves? And... What can I spend it on? That was that was some questions that I asked myself That's kind of going question. through life and this transformation of like, what the hell do I do with all the time that I spend? I don't know. Nothing. Yeah. I think I just waste it. I don't even know that I use it. So <laughs> let me stop focusing on saving time. What if I just enjoyed time? Like right now, instead of saving a minute, That's good. let me just enjoy a minute. Yeah. Whatever I'm doing, if it's waiting behind two people, if it's, you know, yeah. in the car at a stoplight, that's good. Cause I just like stress drive my poor children to school every morning. Yeah. I'm like, okay, everyone get in the car. It's time. Yeah. And, you know, just like yeah. pounding them, nagging them. And I'm like, yeah. what does this do for their morning every morning when I stress drive them to school? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, I kudos. I drive them to school. They're not on the bus because they've asked me to. And so I get yeah. extra time with them. But if I'm yeah. spending that extra time being like a rag and like yeah. pounding them, Hmm. Maybe I can rearrange that and enjoy my time with them. Enjoy the time in the car and just have it be good. If I have to walk inside because we're late, more time with my kids. So yeah, yeah. What if rearrange a, that story. What if it was a dance party every morning going to school? Like you got a playlist that your kids right. all dig and you dig, and it's like and they're just like, "Mom, we got to go to school. We, we got to go because they want to get in and do the playlist. So they're going to yeah. get all their stuff done. They're going. I That's got my good. homework." I got, rich. I got my lunch. I got everything ready. Mom, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You get in the car, you put on the playlist and you guys just rock and party all the way to school and laugh and smile. That's the way to start Bye. the day. Yes. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I need it. This was for me. Thank you. Thank know. you. That, just, that was just cool that's to even perfect. think about. I was just thinking about that. I was like, well, heck yeah. If I was a kid, that's how I would want to go to school. Let's, let's have a, right. let's have a fun dance party. Cause I was thinking when you're telling that, I was like, well, Holly, they're learning from you. Either way, I know, right? They're learning. Yeah. The question is, what do you, what do we teach? What do we want to teach them? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. And I, the horses, they're learning every time I'm with them. Yeah. What are we learning? Is that's the question. What, yeah. what, what are we, what are we doing? For me, it's so important to teach them that calm down, that slow down and enjoy yourself. That's really, so for them, I will rearrange my life for that to be spread to them because then yeah. they get to go and have more fun in life and I don't know, be better humans, whatever. They get to go do them, but at least I've contributed these positive behaviors instead of like the stress behaviors. Oh my gosh, we got to get there. Your teacher's going to be right. mad. Da, 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 da. Story. Right. Yeah. Let it yeah. go. I was that guy. I know all about that side of it. Right. I, hurry, I, hurry, I, hurry, go. I, we talked about that earlier, but in a sense, I like that I know what that's like. Like, it's I relatable. No, that wasn't me until I was like, I don't want that to be me. And I got to tell a different yeah. story and be a different person. And then from, from where I'm at now, I can look back to where I was. And I'm like, oh, that was so valuable to be so stressed out and to experience all of that pain in my body and the mental pain, because now I'm on the contrasting, you know, the pendulum has swung to the other side. And so now I'm over here and I can look back over there and be like, yep, I'm over here. Yeah. Oh, I'm over there instead of being in the stress side and not even knowing where the heck, where am I? What am I doing? I had no idea. I remember girlfriends being like, oh, you know, I've got anxiety. I take these pills for this kind of stress that I have. And I'm just like, oh, well, what's, you know, what's your anxiety like? And they're telling me these things. And I'm like, I have that. <laughs> That's my day. Like why we, we're we supposed to take pills for that? Like, I that's just how we were supposed to live and we just deal with it. And it's like, I am burning myself out in that way of, in that yeah. behavior, in that way of being. And it's, it's a simple, my, my pill now is just going to be this really relaxing or fun ride in the morning with my kids yeah. every five days a week. I'm going to enjoy yeah. that and just be like, Hey, if we're late, I get to walk you in and yeah. just more time. I might be in my funky pajamas with my hair yeah. all messy, but like, good for me. I'm authentic yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah. you know, good for yeah. whoever. See, yep, there's that lady coming in with her kids. So yep. 
So yep. it has this switch that you've done. What has that done for your relationships with those around you? Oh gosh. Well, the most, my, my most precious closest relationship is, is with my wife of 35 years. We have been married 35 <laughs> years. What a journey. What a journey to still be on. That's exciting. Wow. Wow. Not only we've we been married for 35 years, we've been married to the same person for 35 years. This isn't like, you know, a bunch of no things. breakup. Yeah. But we also, we also tell ourselves or we'll, we'll share that, um, I'll, I'll, Cammie will say things that she's been married for, or she's had four different hover, husbands and never been divorced. Right. Yeah. That's probably, yeah. I um, mean, we're a lot shorter. We're like 13 right? years, but same. This transformation or life, you know, changing kind of who we are is, I, it's just part of this existence. It, it's, we're supposed to change. We're supposed yeah. to be don't transforming. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm finding that for myself. I don't want to tell people what they're supposed to do. Oh, I've, yeah. I'm loving this experience that I'm, I'm loving that I can change and whatever it is I don't like about me. Yeah, it takes work, mm -hmm. but yeah, so does not doing it. It's painful to not make changes. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. It's just like, it's so, too painful to stay like in a crazy frenzy driving my kids to school. Like something's yeah. got to give and it doesn't need to be my health or my relationship with my kids. Yeah, <laughs> Let's let go of the Let's hurry. Change that. <laughs> and Tammy and I, we had, we, we had to make some changes in our relationship, obviously, over the course of, of 35 years. The I mean, four it, different husbands she had, it's, yes. <laughs> it's worked that way because we have we have allowed for change. You know, if, if, if you're not willing to change and if you're not willing to change together, there's that's where things break down for sure. There's going to be right? some die off. We've both got to be willing to change and then we've both got to be willing to change together if we're in that type in that relationship. But first and foremost, you know, we had to have the individual space of I think I need to change some things about me. I think that's really that important. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. Not for the other person to tell you, no, you no, need right. to do this. Here's no. how I want you to behave. I'm doing this over here and you should do this exact thing. That's not what it's about. Cause that's, yep. that's a bad recipe. <laughs> Don't yep. follow that one, but to, then, to have that space, like you said, for yeah. yourself. Here's again, horses. I love that. I have horses in my life so that I, I, how I God. talk this way. If I didn't have all of this, right. I am yeah. not, I am not what I am today without the horses sharing all of this with me. But one of the, in the horse training world, you know, from the man side of it is, is you're, you're wanting to get your idea to become the horses, mm -hmm. you know, so, and so what you saw with cuz, you know, my idea was, Hey, cuz I want you to walk over to that tarp, you know, that, that would have been yeah. my idea. So yeah. how do I get the horse to have my idea become his? And that was through pressure, right? So when, mm -hmm. when he was like looking away from the tarp pressure, when he would turn and look towards the tarp release. So yeah, my idea is over there, kind of like, you know, life saying, you might want to look over your left shoulder. <laughs> there's there's a, something good. feels good. So it was just kind of telling that to cuz. And so in my relationship with, with Cammie and with anybody else in my life, this takes a long, this takes time for this to work out. But how do I get my idea of our ideal relationship to be her idea? Right. So this, instead of saying, Hey, I want you to change this and change that and be like this and be like that. Right. There's, there's yeah. me telling, controlling, yeah. Right. That, do it this way. So I feel comfortable. Like I don't want to yeah. be uncomfortable. So do it my way. You know, things can work that way. It just takes longer and it's painful. Right. It's, it's, yeah. It's, I, it's, I don't know. Not my style. Not mine either. Now that I've tried that many times, I can see how that doesn't you work. You had to try it. You had to try it. <laughs> so now getting, you know, my idea of our ideal relationship to become hers. And as I studied that and looked at that, I was like, well, then I need to be the embodiment of my idea. Like I need to be that in every instance in every space and place that I am with her. I, I need to, that needs to be how I show up in everything. And then if, if I'm all of that, then she can be all of that in her version of that. She'll match me, whatever we're, you know, we'll match yeah, each it's other. A dance. We're yeah. going to change together, mm. but it's not, I want you to change like this. It's, if I have that thought in my mind, I'm like, well, if I want her to change like that, then what am I willing to do in me to change like that? And if I do that in me enough, it will just be a part of our relationship and the change will happen collectively together. That yeah. You don't have to force that. It's just going to yeah, show up was, and whenever yeah. on their timing and that's such so much more organic and helpful. It's not, it's just kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah. So for some kind of... It, I don't know, not real life, 
yeah, real life examples. So with these goals that you're mentioning, would it be something like I want I, me over here, Holly, I want more romance or I want us to eat healthier, or I yes. want us to exercise more. Or I want us to have more vacations. Those are the kind of things that maybe we want to bring to our relationships that you're talking about. And then yes. I don't put that on them. I just show up as the Holly. Who's like, Hey, I've got a vacation plan of what do you think or something? Yeah. Is that kind yeah, of what you're saying? I, yeah. Just okay. like, I want to spend some awesome time, you know, alone with you. I, I love you. I want to be with you. And and I'm, I'm thinking of some ideas or, you know, you're just kind of create that in yourself of like, I want to create this and then have it this co-creation together in a, in a sense, you know, instead of, yeah. a, Hey, we need to spend more time together. We got to go on a yeah, date. Like plop it on their yeah. plate. Like we, this is we, us. We should do date night. You know, then we, you never ask me out. So that'd be a way of like forcing it. It's like, you yeah. never take me kind on a date. Them. So if, if I'm feeling that way, or if my, my wife probably feels this way more than I do, right? <laughs> I know. but we'll, if, if I'm wanting that, then, then I want to be all of that. And just like, then I want to be the one that sets that up. What's, mm -hmm. can I covertly make the plans? Can I make sure that the house is clean? Can I make sure that the grocery shopping is done? Can I make sure that the dishes are done? Can I make sure that everything in her world can be handled and smooth and taken care of or whatever I need to do? I, I don't know what that is, but can yeah. I have everything to where her, her easiest thought is, Hey, Maybe we could go to dinner tonight. Mm. Like, you know, I, everything's everything's taken care of. That sounds awesome. I'd love to do that with you. Or, you know, maybe we could go to dinner on, on Friday night. Could we go to dinner this Friday night? You know, if I've, if I've got her feeling enough at peace and at ease and at comfort in her day yeah, to day and I'm, I'm helping out and doing my things to where she's feeling comfortable. And then that idea comes up because she's seeing that I'm maybe improving these other areas of my life. I'm, you know picking my laundry up, I'm doing my own dishes, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm trying to make things be as good as I can on my end. Yeah. And then that creates some energy towards her. And then all of a sudden she's like, hey, should I want to go on a bike ride on Saturday morning. Would you like to go on a bike ride with me? And I'm like, yeah, Score, good yeah. idea. If that's, that's awesome. what you want. Yeah. 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 If you want to. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay. I'll go with you. <laughs> so like that's, that. that takes work, you know, and that takes patience. Like I'm, how long do I have to wait for those, the fruits of that labor? I don't know, but is it worth it? Absolutely. So I'm just going to keep yeah. doing the things as much as I can. There's always space for me to improve. I mean, Cammy would be over my shoulder right now going, oh, he can do, but you know, we can do more because <laughs> I can get pretty down the rabbit hole of things and, and yeah, leave my laundry laying all over the house and, you know, not taking care of that stuff and, you know, let it be there for a couple of days because doesn't bother me, but it, you know, drives her up the wall. So yeah, oh. I know. I know that story. That's me and dishes. I'm like, yeah, I'll get to those, yeah. but they get to, they have to get to a certain point where I'm like, Oh, I really need to get to those. But my yeah, husband, he can't for yeah, him, yeah. they need to just be out of the way. It's not in his comfort zone to have those dishes around. So yeah. if I so want to be comfortable. Be, see, I got to do the dishes. So <laughs> we got the same, we got the, the reverse roles here. So if I want Cammy to feel really good about being in the kitchen or whatever, like if I can go in there and just what there's two dishes in the sink, like my mind would be like, oh, we can way wait until that sink's way fuller before we do dishes. But in her mind, two dishes is like, ah. Get those out. And so it creates a little cortisol bump, a little stress, a little anxiety, a little, oh yeah. man, he left his he left his oatmeal bowl in the sink again, right? It just creates this little, a little tick, a little neurochemical bump. Mm -hmm. But if I just handle it and take care of it right away, because it causes her that little bump, it doesn't cause me that bump, but if I handle it and get it all done, and if I just take away that little bump, how much better is our relationship starting to be if I can eliminate a hundred little bumps in a week? That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, in, when does that border into like codependence? And how do you do you see codependence with horses and their and people yes, training them? Yes. Okay. And Cammy and I are codependent. Like I know, I'm like, I'll be the first to raise so, my hand that I'm codependent with my sweet husband. Like I got I, I feel this. We are so <laughs> that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just say it. I'll just say it. We struggle to be alone without each other. And so with that though, I, I recognize that that it caused me to feel insecure and, and just weird when she wasn't around. And so then mm -hmm. we start being around each other too much and we don't quite get a balance. And then I've noticed that we get we get to where we kind of have a little bit of a breakdown, a little some tension gets in the way, and then we have to take a little break because now it's 
because of anxiety or tension with each other instead of it being a pre-designed personal oh, relaxing yeah. experience like let's so design the, it that way some I'm space gonna, i want to take some time for me i'm going to i'm going to go on a you know i'm going to go on a walk or i'm going to go on a horse ride or i'm going to go hang out with with my jujitsu buddies on yeah. saturday they're doing a barbecue thing at this guy's house i'm going to go down there and hang out i don't necessarily like like I need that time kind of away from her. And then I can also go socially engage with some other guys. So it's a win-win for me because I don't yeah. hang out with guys a lot and talk. But we also kind of create that breakdown on purpose, but in an entirely different neurochemical range, right? I'm going to get dopamine and serotonin hanging with my guy friends and doing a little guy thing. She can do a little girl thing or whatever. And then we can come back together and we didn't have to go through that neurochemical tension, break up. Oh, shoot. Now we got to not break up, but just break down to where we, yeah, have where we have arguments or, or oh, yeah. disagreements. And, Maybe, you know, and, and those used to last for me that, you know, I, it would last, it could last a few days. You know, now we have those same little breakdowns, but now maybe it's only a few hours or a few minutes. Yeah. And Cause it's so case, not worth it. Yeah. yeah. Best case it's a few seconds. We just laugh. We're like, yes, this is so dumb. Yeah. This is so dumb. We know, we know the rabbit hole we're going down. We, let's mm -hmm. just stop. Mm -hmm. let's, let's just stop. Come here. Give me a hug. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, let's I, just, I, Let's go walk outside and just go pick up Let's a rock or something off. and come back. This is just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I like that kind of like changing the energy of like, okay, we're in here in the house, maybe arguing. Yeah. Let's go step outside. That's and laughing breaks that up too. You know, because oh. maybe I am doing the dishes and my husband might come over and say whatever. And then I think of like a I'm gonna snap at you. And I'm like, right away, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm I'm upset and I'm being a rag, like I'm being my way. I don't have to be that way. And, yeah. you know, he can just kind of, we can yeah. laugh at me together and be like, yeah, yeah you're being yeah. that way. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'll, tell, I'll tell Cammy that I'll just look right at him. I'm like, I'm just super struggling right now. Okay. I'm yeah. just, I'm just Let me stuck. just admit where I'm, I'm at. Super stuck right now. So what I need is 30 seconds. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And then pause, you know, yeah, just pause. And then I can breathe. You know, what is, what, what, what can I do to get me back online? Because I know that trigger just keeps going. And I know that trigger can, can go for days or weeks or, and I know it can kind of trigger me into a depression. And then that's just a whole nother battle that I don't that's even want to That's a rabbit hole. With. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> uh, so. I like the setup that you have. Cause me, I feel good about me and my husband have that. He's got like his running stuff and he gets to do that. Yeah. And I got like all my woo woo stuff and I get to do that. And then we could come together and kind of bounce ideas off each other, bring in this new energy yes. and, um, yeah, there's space and there's play. And sometimes we, we are together a lot and we say, okay, what things are we doing in our life that we want to reevaluate and maybe change up because we've gathered new ideas from other places. There's so many, there's so much benefit yeah. to having that balance instead of like, yeah. we have to be around each other all the time because I don't know how to be without you. It's like, yeah. eh, that doesn't yeah. work so well for somebody and like I, me. And, and I felt that way. Like it, it, when we would kind of, she had something going on and I was just all alone and I, it, it, it bugged me. I was like, Oh, I don't like that. This bugs me. Like, I want to be okay with this. Like, I want to be okay yeah, with good. having this space. And so we've set it up to do that. And, you know, she's got, we're purposefully creating that experience rather than have it be a, a, a default of behavior of us conflicting. Yeah. Like, let's just set it up first. Let's slow down faster to get done sooner. There it is again. Well said. Let's, yeah. let's slow this down while it's good. Let's slow down while it's good. Maybe we create a little separate time. You, you pick a thing you like. I want to pick a thing I like, whatever. Let's slow down faster so we can get back together or get done sooner. The, the end result, yeah. yeah. Let's just slow that down and do this instead of it comes up and we we bump into each other and break down and then we have to still go around and fix it. So let's mm. just skip the let's just skip the fix. Let's yeah. just slow it down first. I don't know. That's Ooh. I haven't said that before. Relationships cool. advice is hey. Wow. <laughs> wow. Gosh, so tell me, do you see codependence with the horses and people training and riding and is it when they're spending too much time together or is there a pattern? I've, what does that look like? I created some codependence with cuz oh, okay. I did it. I did it unintentionally on purpose. I don't know how that worked <laughs> out, but <laughs> well, let me, let me explain that. So what I thought I was doing with cuz was oh, okay. I, I was going to, I was focusing on awareness. So I was just like, his awareness where is his awareness where is his attention so i kind of started him like wild this was my approach i was like i got a fresh canvas here 
yeah. this mother nature, this wild horse, it's like a fresh canvas, a fresh experiment for me to work these neurochemicals and behaviors to see what I can do. Oh, what a way and to I, see it. That's yeah, so cool. It's so fun. And so I was focusing on awareness. I was like, okay, because and for me, I was trying to focus some awareness in my life. Like, what, what am I aware of? And what do I want to be doing? And so I really built that with him that, that I really asked for a lot of his attention, like eyes mm. on me, you know, be attentive to me, be attentive to me. And every time he was attentive to me, I would release the pressure. And, and we gained a lot of ground. And I'd spent so much time focusing on that because I kind of wanted to see what's the, what's the rabbit hole here. Let's push what, it, yeah. What's this rabbit hole? the boundaries? Hole? So I kind of kept going and just had him get very, very attentive to me to where he was 100% like he wouldn't look away. Like he was just wow. like everything about me, all of my safety you were God. depends that I'm looking. Yes, it <gasps> depends on that I'm connected. I'm looking at you. Wow. And so if I wanted to like ask him to, like go around the round pen, you know, go away from me, like put pressure on him to drive him away. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, he was, he was like, that was no. anxiety. Yeah. He'd be clear full of fear, but just be like, mm -hmm. I got to stay by you. I got to stay by you. And I'd be like, go away, go away. And he's like, no, I got to stay by you. I got to stay by he's you. He's like, and I know what of, I'm supposed to do. <laughs> all of my rewards are by being attentive to you. You know, I had never <sighs> rewarded him for looking outside, going away. <gasps> this is like my kids. Oh, Sorry. Maybe. Let me just throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> so if I asked him to try to look away to go look at the tarp on the ground, he was like, the hell with that tarp. All I got to do is just stay up laser focused on mm. you. All my rewards are here. I don't know how to find rewards out there. Yeah. So I created him to be codependent because I was too focused on his attention being on me. Yeah. So, okay. That's just a behavior that I created. Well, neuroscience, we can go in and that's why I say this. I think it's part of this existence to be here is to change. Mm -hmm. I agree. Transform. I'm so with that. I just created him to be codependent. Well, I also can go create him to be more self-dependent. That's self so great. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm working on with him right now. And that's what you got to see when you were down here was his introduction to being more self-aware of himself, not aware of me. I built it so much on me. Now I had to build it for him to be aware of himself and what he's going into. And that's what, that's the demonstration that you saw. Yeah. Cause I was like, he seemed to be able to turn to that tarp and kind of be in that space. And he did keep his eye on you now and then, yeah. but when you turned and you talked to us, he kind of let himself explore a little, he was allowed to look around. Yeah. So I, th I think that, yeah, you've kind of dismantled he's, codependence and moved to like, yeah, self-dependence. I like how you said that. And for me, I'm seeing that with my kids. I think I, on some ways I do a great job. It's like, okay, I'm rewarding my kids for exploring other relationships with other people for going outside and exploring the outdoors yeah. without me having to hold their hand and say, now that's a rock yeah. and yeah. there might be yeah. a snake over there. Be yeah. careful. It's like, yeah. Hey, there's probably snakes out there. Be careful. This is what they look like. Now go play. Enjoy. Have fun. Yeah. Have some fun. Go yeah. depend on you. Find oh, your authority inside. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. There's yeah, so that's... many beautiful lessons from these horses. So you, we talked a little bit about the ranch. Is this a place where people can come and work with you and the horses Yeah. or where do you, yeah. Tell, tell yep. me about so, that. So at the ranch, we've, we've totally transformed the property, right? It was grandpa's old place and it had been wrenched and kind of run down for, for decades. Not that it was anyway. It, it was just now, doing its own thing. It was doing its thing. And we've, we've just trans, we've, we've transformed the land and the energy there as well. We have, we have, uh, uh, these big native uh, teepees that we have set up for people to come and stay in our in the teepees uh we got a, a barn we do That's our cooking cool. it's kind of camping style cooking yes. but yeah we have groups of people come um i don't mean groups i mean groups like if you want to come then you know you reach out and talk to us and let's create for you and your group of people to come you know and, and we host retreats so like a, where, a family reunion could come or like a group of five women could come kind or of more everything. like a, a group of of you and your people you know whatever your okay. modality kind of whatever you're into like yeah bring your bring your group and let's co-do this together so we, oh, we cool. kind of like to hang out with people that we would kind of like to hang out with in real life in a sense. <laughs> that's that how sense? we should do our job yeah. quote jobs that's yeah. how jobs should be <laughs> yeah and so uh, but we'll we'll host retreats there where you know we, we'll get a mixture of, of people, but we're all kind of coming for the same reason. You know, they're coming there to 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 learn about themselves and discover how to do this. How do I slow down? How do I find that calm in the chaos? And boy, I've got some cool ways to put you under pressure to where you can find that that calm in the chaos, like you know, being in that eye of the tornado. 
so finding showing people how to find those moments because that is the hard part we're, we're so running and gunning we're not taking the time or we don't have the tools we don't know how to go create these relaxing feelings so therefore we don't yeah so just stuck come, in that yeah rut just of like pack go, it down do keep going. Pr produce yeah. get going survive no, life well, life will be good later. You know, I, yeah, I, I, just reward keep comes doing, I get this career thing going and then I'll be happy. That, that was the biggest lie I told myself was, yeah, then I'll be happy. If that's then. what you're saying in your mind, I guess that, if that, if you hear that in your mind, then I'll be happy. Look Turn the other way. <laughs> super big red flag. Like, yeah. That is a red flag. Then. If only then I would be happy. If only this. And I, I was, I was very dependent on that belief for a long time. I mean, I, yeah, I put 25 years into it. Yeah. And I think each of us have that. It's like, yeah. if I check all the boxes, I'll be happy. If I, you know, look a certain way, I'll be happy. Yeah. If I have a certain amount of money or if I have a certain type of family or relationship, it's like yeah. not out there. So you no, teach that, those tools yeah. at the ranch, how they yes, can do that. That's the beautiful part about the horse because the horse doesn't have that prefrontal cortex of where we would hold the conversation and the evaluation of if this, then that, you know. Okay, that's not I'll, there. Or, Got it. or I'll be happy when. Like oh, the horse for can't, <laughs> can't do that. That yeah. brain structure isn't in their skull. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it's just those not even there to go to. Those neurochemical connections just don't exist. Mm -mm. Never gonna that's, think that's that a, way. We're near at the level that we do. So the horse just really taught me that value of being, you know, just in the moment right now. Just Ooh. Right now is good enough. Right now is good enough. And and because I, I was asking myself, like, well, if I'm not enjoying right now, what part of me believes that I should be rewarded and enjoy another moment later if I'm not willing to enjoy this one? Mm -hmm. How does how would that That's work? Good. Yeah. If if I have the moment right now and I say, so no, rejecting I don't it. Want, yeah. I, no, I don't want it. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wait for the good moments, this, yeah. quote, good, whatever yeah. I value. Yeah. And so that was the horses really just helped me find that of like, dude, that's because they're just right now. It's just, yeah, it's there's just value this. in each moment. It's they're still surviving. Good. How long have horses been on this planet? They're still doing right. good. Right. They might right. know a they're, thing or two. <laughs> they're making it happen. And yeah, they've got it going on. So it, it's, it's been fun. So we love you know, you're putting these retreats and kind of this teaching and we do some meditation and Cammy does, you know, some drum journeys and singing. Oh, bowls I see her drums just, behind you. So gorgeous. Yes. This is a <laughs> I little like, workshop I wish whoever's can watch on YouTube. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> we, we even co-share co office space together. Like that's how dependent we are. Is I'll be that. over here. I just <laughs> kicked my husband out of here, <laughs> but I feel you. Uh, I feel you. Yeah. And then and we like to travel and, you know, we can, we'll, host a retreat anywhere you know we just need to get people together and, okay. and talk these things and and just figure out how to change this neurochemistry in our body you know change how do i change the neurochemistry of how i'm feeling and how i think because changing how i speak how i think changing my thoughts then that, that changes our reality that changes our engagement yeah. with the world and it changes who we are mm -hmm. so getting in tune with that of like I am my thoughts. And that's where I was kind of going with this awareness thing. Like, well, how aware am I of me? And of my thoughts. Yeah. yeah what am I, am I holding on to as a thought what? and saying, this is, this has value. Which thoughts am I letting go? Yeah. Like the value, if I'm in line behind some parents at school, having to drop my kids off yep. and I'm saying, oh, I have to wait behind these people. And I hold on to that thought. Like there there's my go. values. But if I let it go and I say, oh, look at that nice purse she has or, oh, yeah here's pictures of the teachers on the wall. Like yeah. I can look around and find values yeah. and hold on to those thoughts instead. Yeah. And those, and those thoughts create a different neurochemical release inside of your body than the other thoughts. Yeah. Like we're going to get cortisol and some adrenaline. Oh, I got to wait in line behind all these other moms to drop their kids off. Okay. There's a little cortisol bump. There you go. Carry that around all day. Yeah. Yeah, you stack up a few hundred of those a day <laughs> and then you carry them every day. You don't ever release that for 365 days or 10 years. No That's wonder anxiety no pills wonder. and, no and blowouts and no stress. So, so here's the cool part about horses and humans. Horses have experiences. 
And then they, they adjust their neurochemistry based on that real time right now experience. You saw that with cousin the round thing, yes. right? There was, there was times he was very upregulated and then there was times that the, you know, he was in the now moment and we could kind of communicate and he got very, he was, could come down. Centered. Yeah. So horses have experiences and that's how they adjust their neurochemicals is based off those experiences. Humans tell stories about their experiences and then we adjust our neurochemicals based off of our story, story. not what's Mistake. happening, but about the story yeah. about what we think is happening. That is so you're, really in line to, you're in line to drop your kids off. So the story is, oh, gosh, I got to wait in line for all of these, yeah, you know, these moms. And I had this I gotta do this. I'm yeah. trying to do this. Aaron and Wes told me to time myself. And this is really just messing <laughs> up my timing because now there's like five extra moms. So here's all this cortisol and stress, right? So we're, we're just putting that in. That's our story. So that mm -hmm. creates our chemistry. Now our body feels tight and tense because our chemistry is telling us that we're threatened and insecure yeah. and we don't have time. And so we start getting tighter. So do you see how our story creates our chemistry? Our physical our reality. Feelings, creates our emotions. Yeah. And then that creates who I am, myself. And then I get to experience my reality based on my story of myself. So I see the world as five more moms waiting in line because I've got to do my thing everywhere I go all day. There's five more moms. In, yeah, doing it's not just in one place. Well everywhere, everywhere I'm going to find story. things to, to cause me to stress because that's my story. Yeah, you're kind of looking for evidence all over the place for that yeah, one we'll story. It. So we got to be careful of our stories, right? Absolutely. I, 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 we find what we're chemically influenced by. So mm. if I'm chemically influenced by stress hormones, my autonomic system is going to find things to be stressed, stressed out about. about. Yeah. And if Ooh. I'm calm and quiet and I'm just all chill, then my mind will find things to be calm and quiet about. Like you're in the school and you're like, look at all of these cute little kids drawings hanging on the wall you know they had this assignment to draw their family look how cute right mm -hmm. look they're just living life i can have those thoughts while you're standing in line behind the five moms to go in for parent teacher conference mm -hmm. right it's just what story are we telling because it can we can we're so freaking powerful we can do it either way you're right yeah yeah seriously so I, yeah, the work I do is really about helping people let go of those stories that don't serve them because it's so true. It is just a story. Yeah. It's something we hold on to and attach to. And there was a story maybe for you, maybe that you were a certain job, a certain person, yes. however many years ago, I have to do yeah. it this way. And now the story gets to be, I'm going to feed myself with dopamine and <laughs> serotonin. And that gets, yeah. and then everyone around me gets to have that too, because I, contrary when I'm in the car being crazy, rushing, I'm teaching my kids the way to go through life is with adrenaline and cortisol. So do that. And that's the only thing that'll help you get <laughs> stuff done. There's that's mother the nature telling them, right? There's yeah. <laughs> See what mom's doing? Okay. Yeah, she gets do crap that. done. I guess we have to do it this way too. What other way is there? So like, let's tell each other different stories too. Yeah. Start with ourselves, new story, and then spread it out to those around us. It is powerful. It is so simple and so very powerful and it's also so simple not to do and so very powerful to not pay attention to you know you it'll, it'll just either you'll way keep, you'll keep a lot of energy way, either yeah. way and but it is it's so impactful and that was that was really fun for me to find that awareness with the horse like you don't have any stories how the hell would that be what is yeah, that like sounds nice that was really that cool like? yeah and so i had to kind of ask myself well i what would that be like? Yeah. Let me be aware of my stories first. If I'm at least aware of them, sure. maybe I can create a story that I don't have a story for some part of my life or something. Like that's good. Okay, let me. What can I do with this? Ah. So now, Cami and I are. I love pre-telling the story. This is us having some really some fun in our. So Cami and I will purposefully set up experiences us experiences for us to go do that we are uncomfortable. That's I that's that's my game too. I love that. That's good. And then we will pre-tell the story before, like, okay, here's, here's this goes. experience. This is how it's gonna go. Yeah, you know, I don't know all the details, but I can but definitely create the energetic story of what I want the experience to be like. It's gonna be exciting. I might even feel a little scared, but I'm gonna just embrace it. It's gonna feel so good. I'm Ooh. gonna smile. I'm gonna make eye contact. I'm gonna 
whatever, you know, whatever my story is. That's I'm not good. trying to say the exact events. I'm just mm -hmm. going to say what it's going to feel like That's as I, as I start to go into it. And then I'm going to, I want to take that story all the way through the experience to where I'm on the other side and I can look back and go, yep, just like my story. Valid. I validated yeah. my own story. <laughs> How freaking fun is that when we can That's tell That's powerful. Her, yeah, this just makes things fun. And so I do this in just little fun things, you know, like going to get a haircut. Like that could be just the dumbest, stressful, yuckiest, whatever experience. And I've had that for myself. But boy, when I tell a different story about it and I create this super cool story and, you know, like, whew, I have a whole different, whole different haircut. I like that example. That's fun. Cause I have been cutting my own hair for years. Cause I used to go and pay for an expensive haircut and then yeah. not be happy. And yeah. so, yeah, the story we tell ourselves, I need to tell myself that story of when I come in, uh, it could be different. And, and I have gone in for other things. I'm like, I'm going to make a friend here. I'm going to learn information. I love learning. So I'm always like, tell me how you do what you do. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. I but then it gets it. to be that kind of play. If, for me in my life, my story is that life gets to be playful and that it is um, more beneficial. Behooves me to be yes. open, honest about who I am, be present with me and be vulnerable. And I think that's fun. And I'm always yeah. seeking truth. When I tell these stories in my Love life, it. that stuff shows up. Yeah. And I mean, here you are sh showing me that again, like, yeah, it's about, it's about play. It's about being who you are, learning about yourself and finding truths wherever you can find them. <laughs> you know, I, I love that phrase. And I love that you said that at the beginning of, you know, that what, what is your, the tagline that you have? At the, um, oh, so the, the tagline for my podcast is your playful spiritual fix. So yeah. is, is that what you're thinking of? And, and then you said something about truth after something, another line, but. So my values for what I put out are that um, it's, you're seeking truth. And yes. it's playful, adventurous way. And you're being, you're comfortable being in your own skin, getting to be who you are. I so maybe it was one of those. That, that seeking truth. Cause what I'm, what I'm enjoying finding is like the truth that I find in horses and the truth that I find in neuroscience, the truth that I find in myself. When those, when I'm finding, you know, they're all matching and I, I'm like finding this matching truth. Yes, and then when I, I love when, finding I meet, that. when I meet somebody else like yourself and you're, you're telling me about the, about yourself and how you live and like, Ooh, that part of her truth matches with my part of my Resonates. truth. That is awesome. And so I yeah. love finding where truth matches truth. That is, that feels safe to me mm -hmm. when, 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 when truths can connect, it's like, Oh, that brings safety. And now yeah. when we have safety in play, now we can really be creative in who we are and what we think and what we believe when, when we know we're in a space of safety. So. Yeah. You said at the, the retreat last week that the best time to learn is when you're in that space of uh, dopamine and serotonin, not much learning's happening in fight and flight and right. freeze, you know, like yeah. that's all rigid, tight energy, adrenaline, cortisol run away. Whereas the serotonin dopamine is really present in the moment and yeah. open and yeah. space openness is a space to create. I cannot create when I am tense and closed in on myself. I got to yeah. be open. Anyway, yeah, all, all we learn when we're in that closed type in, you know, the cortisol adrenaline, we just, we, we do learn something by <laughs> going through those experiences. We learn to go through them faster or to avoid them harder. Yeah. I've been doing that. <laughs> yeah. But when we find the openness or we try to, you know, we, we, we slow down and we get this bigger space of this dopamine and serotonin, this, this longer than feeling good, we can also, you know, create that space to be longer and we yeah. can learn even more there. So Isn't now we can, great? we can be in the chaos and be just learning and just New loving lessons it. Too. Yeah. 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 It's, um, one of my, my jujitsu guys, the really advanced guys can just really squish you really fast. Okay. Like they can, they <laughs> I can like that. Squish they, you. Can, <laughs> they can squish you. They can, you know, you're, you're just, you're theoretically dead really fast because they're very yeah. experienced. You know, they've been doing this for five years, eight years, 10 years. You know, this is, this is, it's called art, martial art. It is an art form. Anyway, so when I'll, when I'll, we call it rolling when you, when you go grapple, rest around, try to, kill each other rolling. together nicely <laughs> they call it I rolling it. okay yeah, that's rolling. a cool name you're rolling you just get all tangled up and it's just this this mass of just muscles legs and versus arms. muscles and you're just trying to just mine you know, versus who's, mine who's going to get the little angle first to, to get the win you know to get the attack 
And so when I roll with the advanced guys, I I go over with them because it's, you know, they can, they can choose not to roll with you. And they're like, no, I don't want to roll with you. If you're too spazzy or you're too like instantly, you get into triggered into fight mode too hard. And then you really Uh are like doing things really abrupt and sharp. That's not fun for them to take an elbow to the eye and get a black eye because you were spazzing out about something. So, you know, they can say no. So it's, it feels good to have the upper belt, you know, want to roll with you or to, to to agree to be in that dance with you at such a dynamic level. And so when I go over to the advanced guys and I'll be like, you know, we're, we're going to roll and be like, I'm looking forward to my learning. Wow. What a way to approach it. Because I know they're going to teach me something. They're going to squish me. They're going to twist my <laughs> arm off. They're going to choke me. They're, they're going to show me something I don't know about me. And so I'm going to, I love getting in there and, you know, they'll, they'll get the submission move on me and I'll be like, oh yeah. Okay. You I got me, it. you know, there I'll tap is. and I'll be like, now let's back that up. Where did I not know what you were doing? Where was the first spot that you knew you had me? And you go, well, okay, let me, you know, they'll rewind it like five steps. And like, when you took your elbow and just moved it that one inch out on your right side, and I got my hand under it, that was the beginning of the end. And I was like, I didn't even know I was at the end until I couldn't breathe. And okay, so I've got from not breathing to elbow, I got to figure that out. (laughs) Nice. Ah, oh, looking back on that and seeing, okay, where where can I adjust? That's so interesting. Funny. And I love doing that in life in, in a sense that when I feel pain in my life, the horse has taught me this, that pain is a great teacher. Every time I would experience physical pain, you know, a horse stepped on my foot. Uh, I ran into the gate. I, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. I got a scratch from a tree limb while riding a horse. I want to back it up and go, what was I doing before that happened? What was I thinking? Where was my mind? Where was my energy? Where was my attention? What was happening before that happened that allowed that I didn't wasn't aware that that was going to happen? And what took me out of the moment? That has that's been a fun tool to try to stick with. And the more I've done that with the horses, I don't get hurt anymore. Oh, that's rarely rarely do I get hurt now. And I'm talking like a fingernail getting pulled up a little bit. To me, that's pain. I'm going to measure that. What happened before I stubbed my finger on the saddle or the gate or the shovel, whatever, what happened? Why? That, it rarely, it just, I don't get hurt anymore. I, I think I'm just more aware of my moment and I'm just being more in a flow instead of trying to make something happen. That is beautiful. So I, when I was a kid, I was at a Sunday school lesson and they were telling us like, here's your life. Here's your perspective on eternity. And I'm like, okay, it's this, I'm like, why is it so small? And then they said, here's God's perspective on eternity. And it was like all encompassed the whole timeline. And I thought, well, that's cool. But like, I want to be like God and here you are Wes, like kind of like expanding out and okay, let me look back in time a little bit. Let me see uh, how I can broad broaden my viewpoint and just come from different angles and just learn more. I don't know. I love learning and I love just seeing what there is to see, experiencing and saying what grows corn, what feels good, what promotes life and what things cause me to like retract and like close in on myself and what's fear-based. And that's so fun. You get to play with that in the arena with horses. And it's so beneficial for those that come into the realm to see you do that. I mean, it was so well illustrated when we were there at that retreat. I just, I think all of us were astounded. Like, I mean, I knew Uh, I loved horses, but the way that you showed that is brilliant. And so I want everyone to come see you and work with horses with you. So what is the best way for people to reach out to you, to contact you, to get in your world? Yeah, just to come wrestle Anywhere. with you and jujitsu. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you if you really want to talk to me, yeah, be at the be at the gym at about five yes. nights a week and yeah, I'll just roll with you. Let's let's go roll and we can talk there. No. Um finding me on social media and just reaching out and just, you know, hey West, I wanna I heard about your horse thing or I want to come to a horse thing. You know, we promote what we're doing on our social media pages. My website is getting all redone. So I'll, that'll be the, the base to go to is, was my website, which is westtaylor.net. And my first name is West with a T on the with end, the like team. the direction. Yep. That's right. And so, you know, we'll, we'll put what we have on there, but I'm, we're, I'm pretty flowy. I mean, I don't. You want, are. I'm just, I mean, I met you a week uh, ago and we're like, let's do the podcast. And we did. Yeah, it. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. I'm pretty flowy in a sense of just 
let's talk and tell me where you're at and what you want to do and how I can be a part of that. Or if not me, then maybe I know somebody, I don't know. So I'm, That's I'm just slow. pretty like, let's see what's going on. And by, maybe by the time somebody reaches out, I might have a retreat planned and like, Hey, I got a spot. You could go here. We could do this. Yeah. You could come to one of our retreats. So does that sound fair to just be? Oh yeah. I, that's kind of how I work. I am not. I, yeah. I, I, it works for people. <laughs> works, there are okay. people this is that, that works. works for. <laughs> that, that works for okay. me. So I'm, I'm trying to just even find my, give myself permission to do my life and my business any damn way I want to. And that is what we need. In I, the world. I've got structure that's trying to, I feel mm -hmm. like trying to tell me what and where to do. And I'm trying to just like, well, what if I don't want to? Yeah. What if I don't want to have my schedule booked out for the next year of what I'm doing? I, I don't know if I want to ooh, that would freak me out I'm with I, you on that. I, like that would stress me out. Yeah. I'll put a few events, but like, don't fill up all my weekends. Uh, yeah, I might need I, to do something spontaneous. What if, yes. I love doing spont <laughs> me too. spontaneity, uh, whatever the word is thing. Yeah. Spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love doing that. And one of Cammy and I's favorite things is we'll, we'll, we want to do more of this, but like, just rent an Airbnb in some town somewhere that we might want to just go to, or just, I don't know, just some place, you know, Jerome, Arizona, let's rent an Airbnb yeah. there, take off and go spend a weekend there and look around town and just get out of my, get out of my element, get out of my world, go get in another space and place. Yeah. And Broadening you, your horizons, man. Again, it gives you an opportunity to just be whatever you want to be. Tell your own story while you're there for the weekend. Wow. Yeah. You could like change your name if you wanted. Yeah. When you're out to dinner, yeah. You're talking to somebody you're like, my name is Dave. Yep. <laughs> Try that on. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's just fun stuff that. that we do. So that's like those uncomfortable experiences that we plan ourselves to go do. And then we tell a story about what it's going to be like. And so it's just fun to go play with the stories and see that. Lots we, of play. That and we curiosity. Didn't yeah. We yeah. didn't die. Oh, we did that. We didn't die. Oh my gosh. Cause you know, I think our belief system is Oh, if you get out of the comfort zone, you'll you'll die for sure. There's death outside of this. Theoretically, you know, we just have this internal fear of, of don't do anything outside, but I'm finding way fun things out there. Oh, I love yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Find fun things in that aren't just in the same place, like looking outside, broadening horizons. Yeah. So yeah, I invite everyone to who's been touched by this to come get into West World and see what there is to see and what it's like being outside of that comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. So is there, are there any like last words, anything else you want to iterate or like a special quote that you want to share? Although you've given us like so many, I'm like, I got to write that down. I got to write that down. All so right, when I right. edit this, I'm going to be like writing a ton. Like, <laughs> yes, I need to remember. Cause that's how I help. Well, when, when you get the remember. list all together, please text it to me. Cause I'd yeah, love to okay. have that too. <laughs> I'll send you a picture. Here's what I wrote from yeah. what we talked about. Cause oh, I think God. we might be similar in that it's pretty spontaneous, whatever comes up and out of our mouths, it's yeah. here for the moment. And then it might be gone. Uh, and like, sometimes I'm like, I want to learn from the things that just happened. So I, that's why I journal, but anyway, yeah, I'll we, text you that. <laughs> we've grabbed some good ones just over time working with the horses and that it just, it, it we really come up with a lot of good little one-liners to just keep kind of keep me on point and, and keep me going. But I, I really, I don't know. I think, just giving yourself permission to, to be okay with being you just, it's okay. Whatever the hell you are, you, however yeah. messed up you think your life is, or however junky some relationship, I don't know, whatever it is, just, I just give yourself a breath that I'm okay right here, right where I'm at. I'm okay. Right. freaking here like this. I gotta be okay right here. Cause I'll never be okay over there if I'm not okay right here. So finding that space, that was hard for me. It was super hard for me. That is Sounds hard, right? To, to find to be okay after you know what happened to me in life with my business and everything, and trying to redefine myself and go again. I was just it was really, really difficult for me to just be okay being well, that's like our trauma stories. Like when we reject uh, what happened in the past, was like, how am I gonna be okay if I can't say like that's okay, that's over? Yeah, that, that happened. happened. Yes, I I'm acknowledge already, I'm through it. I'm not bringing it with me. It's it's Ugh, like a it, bag. I went through it and I have the story of it and I have my knowledge and my learning from it. That's valuable. You know, that, that I do want to, I do want to take that forward in time. So I don't know. That's what it feels like right now is just find a way to just be super okay with you, yeah. whatever that is for you. And I, that's a struggle for me every freaking day. Like every day I find places where I blip into what should I be? in this moment. Yeah. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. No, stop already. Just, it's okay. 
I love that. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, that's so true. Cause like, even before we started, we're like, okay, like, do we need the lighting? What's in the background? And yeah, like yeah, yeah. this, that, and the other. And it's just like, you know what? I live like this. Like I, I have a mess. My bookshelf is crazy or like yeah. whatever's in here. It's, it's, yeah. I'm a person. This is how I live. Uh, my, my whiteboard back there. That is yeah. like my favorite tool. Like all of a sudden I'll be like, Oh, idea. I'll go write it down. Like that's all I got to do is go write it on the board. I actually have a four by eight, like four feet tall, eight feet long whiteboard. This thing is huge in my kitchen. Like in, in the, the kitchen. Other, yeah. And I've got black marker all over that thing. Like every idea or something come up. Cause I don't want to get stuck on the idea or, oh, I got to remember that. I was like, go write it down. And then get it out of I walk by, it might come up later. You know, there might be something written on that that's board good. that I don't focus on for six months from now, but that's kind of what I do. So anyway, whiteboard, I got notes all over, papers hanging up. I it's just. I, I know. I know. That's how I remember things. This paper's here so that I remember, blah, blah, blah. I like the whiteboard thing because then it's kind of like one okay. space. I'm just trying to be okay with me, right? Because there's stories that, oh, well, you I should be? organize all that in a spreadsheet and it should all be something, something, something. And I'm like, well, okay, maybe for somebody, but for me, yeah. I need to see it. I need to see chicken scratches all across. You know, I need to see all these little squiggly marks of my ideas. And then it's super cool to go back and go, oh, we did that one. It was so awesome. Oh, yeah. That did turn out okay. That, yes, that was awesome. That's cool. So maybe that, maybe write yourself out. I don't know. There, there were so many golden nuggets in there. Uh, Please take out, like just skip uh, wherever, go back and forth in this. You're going to uh, find something really good. It's going to like, there's something in here for everyone that's going to land and help them be exactly what you said. Just being like comfortable with who they are and being themselves and in that moment, because it's not going to be better in some other moment, in some other space, place right, or time. Right. Just, I'm right here right now. It can't so. be okay right now. Yeah, that's, that's all right. I like I'm I'm taking that for myself. Like I need this, that's this. right now. Mm -hmm. I, all right mm -hmm. for me. Be okay <laughs> right now. Cause what if yeah, what if you don't make it to the next moment to be okay? You're like, well, I missed out on right. being okay right now. So let's yeah. do it now. Enjoy easier, the moment. Easier said than done, but well worth going through the struggle to figure out how to do. Right? It it is. So Whew. Okay. With that, everyone listening, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, West, for coming on the, the show here and sharing all of your wisdom, all of your experiences with the horses. And there's so much more from you too. And so we've just like scratched the surface. So again, if this touched you, just go ahead and reach out to West. And I, I mean, I'm, I might need to have you come on again. Like I just love this stuff. Well, we could go on it. and on. It's good for me. This is so good. Right? This is, this is me being comfortable with me like this is a challenge like this is a struggle and that's for me. what this people is... want yeah so thank you for giving me the space that i can tell my story and practice being me right that's yeah. all i'm doing on here <laughs> yeah thank you uh, okay so i want to tell listeners my my favorite last thing just remember to love yourself forward backward inside and out because you are the unfolding of the universe <laughs>